Hello everyone and welcome to another PWN Design Studio tutorial. In this tutorial I'll be talking about a few different things in here that aren't very well covered in other videos that I have seen or by myself and that is <clears throat> um, up here in the mapping area. You have all these options right here that not a lot of people are um, talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, describe to you and show you what they do. So what I have here is a landscape that I created in World Machine, imported into view in the typical manner, whether you're using a, a procedural terrain with a you know a map to object or uh, just a standard terrain. It doesn't really matter. It'll work either way. Um, and I have a couple maps I want to throw on here. One is a uh, color map. So I'll just go ahead and load that up. Here it is. And as you can see right here, it's not mapping very well. It, it's not mapping at all, actually. It's, well, it's mapping. It's just it doesn't look good. So I'll just do a quick little preview render here, and I'll show you. And it's just everywhere. The map is really small. It's tiling. It's, it's, it's not looking very good. And what you would usually have to do is go in here and use the image scale. And so if my brain is treating me fairly, I think this is the scaling that I had it at before. Nope, it's even larger than that. It's going to be... 5,000? I've tried a couple of these. I can't remember exactly which ones I've tried. I think it's 5,000. Uh, nope, it's even smaller than that. So instead of just wondering what the size is and trying all these different ways of you know getting it mapped appropriately, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and scale the landscape up to the size that I had it in World Machine. So that is 10 kilometers squared. <clears throat> and I had a height of 2565. Five. There we go. That's what I had. And if you look up here, or if I go up here and then look down, you can see that it's not mapping correctly either. As a matter of fact, this right here is the top of this mountain. And I can go back in and I can scale this down again. And hopefully that works. So 1300 looks like it was the size that it was at. Um, and I didn't get that because of experience. I got that because I had to play around with this for a very, very long time to figure out the size and the scale of my terrain to make sure it maps appropriately. But it's mapping appropriately now. Uh, but instead of having to do that, let me go back and um, let me change the scaling down to one by one again. And you can see how it's all over the place again. And you can't really see it being mapped appropriately here. Well, there's an easier way of doing this. And you can do this after you scale the terrain or, you know, you can do it after or before. It doesn't really matter. You just change the mapping to object parametric. And what that'll do is it'll map everything appropriately, but you have to make sure that the scale of your material is set to 1. If it's not set to 1, it's not going to scale the way it should. And as you can see, it is now scaling appropriately. Now it looks like it's scaled exactly how it should be. One for one. So no hours of tedious, or you know, not maybe hours, but no tedious processes of trial and error. You just object parametric, set your material scale to 1, and it maps exactly how it should. So hopefully this will save you guys a lot of time um, trying to get your, you know, your color maps and whatnot to map appropriately. And this doesn't only work on, this won't only work on um, your color maps, this will work on all of your maps. So if you want, you can turn this into a mixed material. And in the distribution right here, you just load up another mapping node, projected texture node, and you can load up your erosion maps, right, like this one. And uh, it'll map appropriately there too. You just got to make sure these two materials right here 
won't matter just as long as this material right here, this mixed material, is object parametric. If that's set to object parametric, these can be set to, I believe, anything you want. Let me just double check that. Nope, you're going to want these to be set to object parametric as well, um, or else it isn't going to work. So just make sure that all of them are set to object parametric and their scale is set to 1, and then they'll map exactly how they should. Um, so if we go and test this, I'm not going to assign an, a material to this, but you'll be able to see that it is indeed mapping exactly how it should. And this is a very extravagant erosion map. I can use something different other than this, or better yet, I can go in here and take down the uh, proportions a bit. And there we go. Now you can see. So it's mapping exactly how it should, and it's just a few simple little qu clicks, no sitting there and playing around with it and trying to guess and guess and guess. It's, it's simple. Just everything set to object parametric and your scale set to 1, and it'll work with all of your maps. So before, what I would do in Vue is a long time ago, and when I say a long time ago, I mean like 2009, I would uh, load up my, my terrain. Back then, I was using standard trains because I was learning, um, and I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't scale my object yet, because if you did, if you scaled it before you put your maps in, um, it wouldn't work. You would get artifacts, and it wouldn't um, it wouldn't look right. It would do exactly what it was doing here. It wouldn't tile, and it wouldn't map appropriately. So I would go in here, and you know, I would load up my image right here that I brought in from World Machine. Uh, and scaled it and whatnot, or uh, increased the resolution, and then went in, and then I would load up my mixed material here and put in my distribution map there, and after that, I would then go in and I would scale it to the right size. Um, but <clears throat> you don't have to do that. And these options have been in view since that version. I just never really played around with it, and I never really saw anybody else doing it, even even people who... Uh, have been using Vue for a really long time and have made other videos. They never really explained that either. Um, so that's just a nice, easy way to map your your maps to your your erosion maps and your color maps and whatnot to your terrain without having to fiddle around with it. So, what does that mean, though? What does object parametric, world standard, world you know, object standard, whatever? What do those even mean? Well. Parametric is a automated. Um, it's an it's an automated uh, mapping coordinates uh, function. So what it does is it'll automatically map the coordinates of your um, your texture or whatever to your object. And if your object ob your object can be scaled however it wants, it's just going to automatically do it. So I have a description right here from Eon's Soft from Eon Software's website on what parametric is. And it says, parametric in this mode, the mapping coordinates are automatically adjusted in such a way that they are independent on the size of the object. This mode is particularly useful when mapping, for example, a picture on a cube, because resizing the cube will not affect the number of times the picture is mapped on the cube. So that means I have all this stuff mapped on here, now I can go in here and I can increase the scale, and it's not going to affect my map it's going to it's going to remain the same whereas if you're using world standard i believe if we go in here and change all this to world standard so this one and this one and this one and keep it all one well first of all it's not going to be mapped appropriately anyways it's going to be all off so i can change it to world standard and i can scale it i can scale the terrain like this and it's not going to maintain my mapping coordinates. And it's not even going to maintain my mapping coordinates anyways because when I changed it back to world standard with a scale of 1, they, are, they were already messed up anyways to begin with. So I would have to go in there and again manually adjust them under here, under the scale, and now you're going to be fiddling around with it for a really long time trying to figure that out. So just use object parametric so it's mapping to that object, which it is in relation with, and it should work. But let's try something else. Let's change it to world parametric. 
all of these to world parametric. And let's see what that does. So now if we go back over here and try to render that out, let's see if that mapped it appropriately there. Nope, it didn't even map it appropriately, appro appropriately there either. So, <clears throat> um, so object parametric will definitely be the one that you want to use. So there are a bunch of other, oops, I didn't want to open that. There are a bunch of other things here that you can use. So there's the world standard, the world cylindrical, spherical, and parametric. Um, and all these are going to affect world space, and this is only going to affect object space, so per object rather than per world. Um, and these are just different things you can use. So if your object's like a cylinder, you can use object cylinder, and it'll map it appropriately for a cylinder shape, and same thing with spherical. That's all that's going to be. Um, and if you have a spherical world, uh, like if we can do a spherical scene, I have a video on how you can do that. You can use um, the mapping here for world spherical and whatever you attach to the world uh, will be mapped appropriately there as well. So object parametric, very easy, very straightforward, nothing to fiddle around with and try to get right. It's just going to work for you. <clears throat> so I also want to let you guys know what... Um, what these, uh, let me see if I can find it, what these uh, other options I've been choosing but I haven't really talked about are as well. So inside my terrain right here, you can see me numerous times I go into my, my terrain after importing a map and I choose interpolation type and I, I, always, I usually set it to bicubic. Um, but the differences are is that these are oversampling options different interpolation oversampling options. None, obviously, there's no oversampling. Uh, bilinear is uh, a bilinear interpolation between pixels. Uh, normalized are values proportional to the distance to the corners of the pixel. And then bicubic is just bicubic interpolation between pixels um, on a continuous derivative. So if, those, if that makes sense to you, then it makes sense to me. I just can't really put it in words because I fail at that. But um, I always use by cubic. I could use uh, normalized. And what this does is when you choose these, sometimes when you import your uh, your map into view from World Machine, if you get really close with a render, you can you'll notice like these steps in it. It's not in it's it's not blending the way you would like it to. Especially when you're doing like your final render, you have your entire scene set up and then you have like these weird steps, almost terracing like effect in it, but very small and very annoying. Um, you use that, uh, you use those, um, uh, those interpolation types to get rid of those steps and bicubic tends to do it for me. Um, I've used bilinear before and it didn't really work the way I wanted it to. And I've also used normalized, and it actually made it worse. So it really depends on your situation. Bicubic seems to work for me a lot of the time. So I just wanted to throw those out there for you guys, and uh, that way you will know what they do. If you want to know exactly what Eon says on their website about these interpolation types, <clears throat> this is the description they say. You can, po you can position the picture precisely on the object by using the image offset commands. This will move the picture around by increments of one pixel. When the material is seen from very close, you may see pixels due to the limited resolution of the picture. To reduce this effect, choose an interpolation type method. And those were the ones I just gave you uh, and their descriptions. And that pretty much uh, is it. I want to kind of describe the... Uh, for you one more time the uh, world standard and what they say because I went over the object parametric one but not the world standard so if you're using the world standard standard uh, mapping function the geometry of the train will change as you move the train about and in this mode the train should be understood as a window observing a particular area of the procedural altitude function if you move that window you will see other parts of the function but if you return to the initial location the same part of the function will be observed and hence the geometry of the train will still be the same. So if you enlarge the procedural train in the 3D views, you will be observing a larger area of the function. Um, the features in the train won't be any larger. You'll just see more features. That makes sense. 
Um, and you can enlarge the terrain until it stretches up to the horizon, thus creating the surface of an entire planet. If that helps you understand exactly what those do, and it has definitely helped me, especially when I do this really annoying texture mapping problem and <clears throat> um, I couldn't get it to work because that old trick that I had before where you just don't scale the terrain after you import it until after you put your maps in just doesn't work now. Um, it worked perfectly for me before. So hopefully that helps you guys, and uh, if, it, if you guys have any questions or concerns, please let me know, and I'll be happy to try to answer them for you appropriately. If you have any uh, requests, go ahead and let me know. And uh, thank you for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share if you would like. And you can also contact me at www.pwndesignstudio.com. Actually, you know what? www.pwndesign.com. There you go. Thank you. Bye.